I'll very quickly summarize that what do we do with all this information and data, right? So how do we master this? So remember the numbers from previous slides. Just uh, learn them. And then during the interview discussion, ask interviewer for the necessary numbers important for the problem at hand. Like how many daily active users are coming, overall how many users are there, what is the latency of the important APIs in the system, and yeah, so these kind of discussions you can have with the interviewer. And many cases, interviewers will provide you with the numbers. If you are experienced backend engineer, then uh, interviewer is not going to ask, uh, not going to answer any question. They will just uh, tell you, okay, wh what you think. Yeah. Then ballpark numbers and estimations are perfectly fine. It doesn't matter if the number of users assumed is 100 million or 500 million. So you can uh, first you should ask interviewers for the necessary numbers. You know, uh, so let's say um, interviewer says, okay, design Instagram. And then you discuss about the some functional requirements, and then you go to this part and you say, okay, for Instagram, I think there are huge number of users in the world. Do you have any number in the mind which I can work with? Then if interviewer gives you a number, then uh, let's say interviewer tells you, okay, uh, 75 million users. Then you can say, okay, 75 million. Okay, I'll, I'll round it up to 100 million users for easier calculation. And if user uh, the interviewer does not give you a number, then uh, assume some number and validate. Okay, uh, Mr. Interviewer, I think that uh, 200 million sounds like a good number to me. What do you think? Then uh, they can course correct you if they think that you are you are not in the vicinity of correctness. Yeah. Then master the power of two table and keep doing these conversion conversions in your mind just for fun. Okay, two to the power. 10 is 1000, 2 to the power 30 is 1 GB, it is 1 billion, you know, do, uh, keep doing these uh, reverse calculations in your mind just for fun. Stick all these numbers on your wall and keep revising them, quiz yourself. If I wake you up in the middle of night and ask you that how many gigabyte data is, is in 700 million user ID for 8 years, you should be able to answer it within few seconds. Because our target is that we should not waste time on this exercise during the interview. Yeah, and as Master Yoda says that practice, practice, and practice for mastery. Okay, I'll uh, quickly go through some questions now. Yeah, I'll share the slides. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll share the link with the uh, ops team and uh, they, uh, they can share it with you. Then somebody asked, uh, can you explain about mutex lock and lock from previous slide? Yeah, so uh, like it, you know about the mutexes in coding, right? So, 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 um, so, uh, so, like let's say you enter a discussion with the interviewer uh, that that there is some critical section. Let's say you are uh, you are updating uh, some. Um, something in database table right or, or no uh, let, let me think of a good example here. yeah let's say uh, you are writing a banking application and then you start discussing that okay like for updating the account balances i will do it in a critical section where i take the mutex law okay. then in that case uh interviewer can uh, if you are an experienced backend person in that case, uh, they can uh, talk to you about this. Okay, what do you think that what will be the side effect of having these logs? Then you can talk about this. Okay, I know that you know mutex lock unlock takes this much time, and uh, you can build a discussion on that. I'll uh, let Gustavo talk. So Gustavo, you have your hand raised for a long time. Yes, Gustavo, please go ahead. Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, how did you bring up the charting when talking about storage? Uh, so can you please repeat your question? I mean, when, you, when you're talking about like uh, scaling storage and 
talking about replication, how do you bring up a, like a ch charting? Charting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, for uh, shard, uh, this is uh, not the uh, right class, uh, Gustavo, for uh, talking about sharding because it is a complex uh, topic if we start talking about it will take a lot of time so uh, you know i'm I'll, uh, i have some material on sharding as well uh, so what i'll do is that i'll request ops team and i maybe i'll have a separate discussion on sharding now uh, we can do a floater session on sharding okay thank you yeah. i have one question uh, uh, regarding three throughput and uh, server response time so is 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 both both are same or both are same or it's different i am always confused with the throughput uh, because right now we did the exercise right in that we calculated the throughput so it seems like that's a server response time so your question is that what is throughput i mean what is the difference between throughput and ser server response time or service time Okay, so throughput means that how many requests you can uh, you are serving, how many units of work your system is able to do in a time period, and to calculate that, we first need to know that what is the cost of one unit of work. So in our API example, the one unit of work is one API call. And how much time it takes? It takes 100 milliseconds. So from that, we calculated that, okay, one, the throughput for one thread is 10. Then we extrapolated these numbers. Okay, what is server response time or service time? Because I, I, I in last class also, I heard this term, terminology. I was thinking that, okay, when API is executing that whole time, it's called as a service time. Uh, so I think these uh, topics are uh, covered in the uh, fundamentals of system design, the, the lectures which are given by Omkar, which are, so uh, uh, I think you can uh, check there. Okay. Yes, thank so Nagarjuna, thank you Nagarjuna. Uh, Nagarjuna also mentioned that it, these are covered in fundamentals. Yeah, I have also gone through the fundamentals. These are, like if you have not seen those fundamental videos, then I guarantee you, you, you are missing very important thing in your, in your life, in your journey for system design. No, so I have I seen, but I always confuse with those uh, terms actually, our, especially the throughput and uh, the service response time. So that's why. Okay. Okay. In that case, yeah, uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, there are many questions here. So, and this is not a common question. So maybe you can uh, take it up in, uh, the the sessions which are which happen with the experts right uh, so you can talk about that or maybe i'll uh, share my uh, id in the end so you can uh, talk to me also offline okay thanks thank you how many years in future we can think of yeah so as like we saw like six years nine years three years the multiple of three years is a good number why divide by 70%? I hope that is clear now. 64 bits is yes, it's 8 bytes. Yes, it's big integer. Yeah, well done, Madhuri. Yeah, this one we have discussed. I guess we need DAU only to save one fifth users to get the focus on this calculation. Yeah, see, uh, if we are designing any system for users, right? So first we need to have a good estimate at how many users are there. That is the starting point of your discussion. So that's why like, this is the first number you should discuss with your interview. Yes, I'll share the notes. It will be there in the presentations also. So how should we divide what we among number. Yeah, we discussed this. Right? So we are going, uh, we are going to divide forty petabyte by hundred TB because that is what one storage server takes. Uh, there are so many comments and questions. I'm just trying to keep up with it. Okay. 
we need to use bytes we should talk in terms of milliseconds how we are determining the number for id so how i determine the number for id we discuss this in the uh, starting itself right for user id and for big number id how do we do that so, uh, email yeah so email and name you can say that you know that one character is one byte right so you can say okay 50 characters is good enough for a name 50 characters is good enough for an email id so from there it comes at uh, and one character is one byte so 50 bytes what is d1 d2 d3 uh, so d1 d2 d3 was not data centers it was just i was trying to tell that data is copied into three servers right so that's why so d1 d2 d3 i used the notation for that sorry if i confused you it was not data centers should we also consider replication of app servers similar to having backup yeah yeah uh, this is a good question uh, ranjit that should we also consider replication of app servers similar to having some backup servers yes uh, definitely definitely uh, you should bring this up in your discussion with interviewer and uh, ideally um, uh, so if your system is very critical system you know like leader election system let's say you have and in that case uh, you need to have backup servers which uh, as soon as the primary fails they start serving the requests but let's say you your service is like a generic api serving service and it's stateless right that means the request can go to uh, go to any server right it, so in that case you have a load balancer and you have let's say 100 servers behind the load balancer so even if one or two servers go out of the system you are okay with it so you do no, no need of having replication for all those 100 servers yeah exactly Sankar. thank you so much for answering that so app servers are stateless and they're yeah that makes sense you can replicate for geolocation maybe if required yeah so uh, this is uh, yeah so like if the if you start talking about that what kind of redundancies you are going to have at the data center level yes uh, you can talk about it but often um, it does not the discussions do not go to that level but if it goes there if, uh, if you know about it if you are aware of it then great close to you you can talk about it in photo video should we think about bandwidth calculation as well yeah, I have seen uh, these uh, things in the uh, tutorials and everything, but I have never experienced bandwidth calculation during the interviews. Um, yes, you uh, like if you know about it, uh, good. Uh, you can uh, if uh, if interviewer brings it up, then you can talk about it. But like for me also personally bandwidth calculations are not that very important unless i am designing something which is you know related or very sensitive about the bandwidth or it's specific to something that but otherwise uh, it's uh, not a very necessary topic to talk about yeah so any calculations for network throughput you know so again uh, you can uh, I'll, I'll i'll try to find out the numbers for network throughput that ideally what is the throughput then you can uh, once you have that number you can just do the reverse calculation from that i'll try to find it and update in the slide but again um, i'll go back to my point that it's not a very essential thing to be discussed generally can you give example for io calculations so uh, raj again uh, this is again a very I would say a very niche topic, right? Uh, the IO calculations, you know, even if you are a very experienced engineer, if you know the numbers about that, uh, what is the IO rate for a disk? Uh, in case of, in case you are designing a database, or if you come from an from background experience that where you have designed databases, then these things might come up in the interview. But for uh, general purpose, uh, these things wouldn't come. In, uh, in interview yeah so uh, i'll maybe i'll look at, uh, i'll find out these numbers and i can put in put it in the 
a slide and you can uh, do the reverse calculation from these numbers i hope we all are expert in doing the calculations fast now yeah thank you sarika for the feedback yes. yeah 100000 requests per second is a throughput and 100 millisecond is the latency yes pratik i'm not sure what your question is about maybe you can uh, rephrase it again let me help you this so our cpu has different from language that's what you are seeing is it okay so you uh, generally what happens is that uh, the language threads are mapped uh, one to one with the cpu threads um, the uh, not the cpu threads so the the uh, uh, threads at the os level the operating system level generally uh, so like uh, java does that and in case of golang it does not happen in case of go language in one os thread many language threads work inside that so um, so uh, you should know about this thing in your preferred language so if interviewer brings up this discussion um, you are able to discuss about it but uh, generally in system design interview uh, nobody is going to talk about it maybe not even in a coding interview yeah of course if the coding interview is about the multi threading then yes it will be discussed at length or if it's a language specific interview then it will be talked about thank you kosto for answering that any other questions i second the request for exercise on streaming how do we calculate the data transfer rate that is the size of the request for we are not clear like what is being requested here uh, 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 uh vedinathan would you be uh please kind enough to you know maybe expand on it and uh, send a note to ops team and i'll request the ops team to provide that note to me and then i'll have a look into it surely if uh, people are asking for it then uh, we uh, uh, we will do a session on it do we need to consider db sessions limit while calculating so a uh, db sessions limit so uh, this is again an advanced topic right so if uh, uh, in a very in a generic system design interview a uh, uh, interviewer won't be asking about it but if you uh, but if you have on your resume that you have expertise on database or if the company that you are going to interview they focus a lot on database then yes of course uh, these things will come into play these things will be discussed at at length okay maima uh, that's a good question so a uh, first part yes i think it's good enough for capacity and scaling planning in interviews of course i mentioned some caveats uh, like about the network bandwidth about the db session limit and those things so if your interview interview round is about a very niche technology or topic or requirement then your discussion can go in other directions but in most of the cases yes this is good enough and should we do it at the last of the interview so is by or okay so so uh, what happens is that what i have experienced in my interview so i used to keep it for the calculation i used to keep this calculations at the end and what happened uh, in many cases that even in my mock interviews also it happened that we crossed our time while discussing the uh, other important things about system design and then i saw this feedback that i did not discuss the calculations i did not discuss the numbers and that was uh, a negative feedback that was coming from me so that's why i started doing this uh, i started uh, deriving these calculations and i start practice them a lot so now th then eventually i started doing at the start of my interviews 
and i know that for me it takes only 2 to 4 minutes maximum and once i have done that i have seen that okay interviews interviewers are impressed in the starting itself okay this person knows back end this person can solve ambiguity this person can uh, do some well educated it can take some well educated guesses i can see that and then that the confidence builds up from there yeah so if you have as i said so if you have mastered these calculations i think by all means you can uh, talk about it at the start of the interview if interviewer is not interested in it then interviewer will tell you that okay uh, let's take this calculations at the end or later on yeah so vedinathan has asked are we assuming databases will be running on commodity servers if so is it yeah so if you uh, um if you uh, see the uh, distributed databases nowadays right so they run on commodity servers yes they are optimized uh, for the disk io to an extent but this 70% is still a rule of thumb you can uh, take that number that your disk should be filled in that level only will regular or something id will suffice us I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, about the auto increment ID uh, because it would depend on the database. You know that database is da a database has what kind of data type for that auto increment ID. So you have to check. So you know again, uh, like if you bring these things in interview, that I think auto increment ID would be sufficient for it. Then interviewer is going to do a deep dive on that. that what database you are talking about what is the data type how much bytes it can have so so uh, so if you have expertise on that then only go in that direction so pratik has asked question that file systems such as gfs and hdfs u64 mb and 128 mb of chunk sizes but are meant for very large files in general yeah, so uh, pratik uh, the uh, gfs and i'm not sure about the hdfs but gfs also you know under the hood uh, the uh, file the chunk size which is used is uh, is 1 mb to 2 mb actually i'm actually i'm uh, i work in that team so i know what should be the upload download ratio for streaming app design what is a streaming app like Can you please explain? Can you give me some example? Streaming app. Okay, okay. By streaming app, you means a uh, YouTube or uh, Netflix kind of thing. Yeah. Again, uh, uh, in that case, I think read write ratio would be even bigger, right? So you can see a one popular YouTube video that it is uploaded once it's seen millions of times. Even the bad videos also they they are seen five times or ten times. so yeah again you can take a very uh, you can take 1000 in that case a ratio is 10 1000 again it's a, it's a, a like it's a no hard and fast rules here you know you just have to go with your gut feeling and your common sense and of course discuss your assumptions with interviewer that is very important so and whenever you are making assumptions talk to an interviewer that hey i am assuming this i don't have, you can clearly say that hey i don't know about the uh, about the exact numbers for twitter or instagram but i am taking i am going to take this educated guess here what do you think and they will post correct you even interviewers won't know those numbers unless it's instagram and that person works in that department they would know it. otherwise people won't know that. Okay, data streaming is like Kafka streams. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, Kosto. I was getting confused. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So for streaming again, yeah, we are getting uh, some requests for streaming. So uh, uh, let me uh, talk to the product manager who takes care of this system design here. I I will uh, talk to her. Uh, duly noted. I have noted it. Okay, then there was a question about uh, hyperthreads. Okay, uh, I mean I'm not very sure about it. I I think hyperthreads they also do context switching actually. So they are optimized for that. So actually, at a time only one thing, uh, one 
one thread is only being executed. So it does the context switching so fast at the uh, CPU level itself that uh, the lag is very less. So it seems to be two threads. That is what I know. I might be wrong, but again, again, you know, don't bother about these uh, finer details. Yes, if you are an expert about it, if you have worked in hyperthreading, you are expert. Talk about it by all means, but don't bring anything into the picture which you are not confident about it's a buzzword you have heard about it you think maybe you know i can just impress the interviewer but do talk about those things in interview yes definitely am so that's what it was uh, in the slide as well so if we have a 32 core server and eight threads per core then roughly 250 threads per server Okay, I see a couple of hands raised. Uh, Nagarjuna, do you have a question? Please go ahead. Yes, yeah. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, wonderful. So, uh, talking to a few people you know, who recently gave uh, the system user interviews, you know, they, there seems to be some uh, to be careful, ab being careful about, you know, knowing before the hand if it is system design interview or scalable system design interview. You know, in system design interview, you know, you don't focus on all these numbers and all. You know, you just uh, come up with your design, you know, how you design a system. You don't worry about how to scale. So, is this something that we should ask the the interviewer uh, before you deep dive into the into into those uh, scaling part? Or uh, yeah. by, by default, every system design interview, we need to go through these uh, scaling scalability requirements. Yeah, that's what my experience is. Generally, it, it is required as an interviewer. I would also expect it, you know. And so, uh, uh, so it's unless uh, so it's uh, you know it's very safe that you should talk this thing with interviewer first. Okay, before deep, okay diving into the numbers. Okay. Yes. Once once you have sorted out the functional requirements, you are in agreement with interviewer. Just ask them. Hey. Uh, uh, do you think uh, we, uh, I should do a quick calculations here that how many servers would be needed for five years or ten years, and then uh, if they are interested, they will let you know. Right. Yeah. Apparently, I mean, recently I'm uh, talking to one of the the colleague. You know, uh, the interviewer was uh, was actually upset that you know he went into uh, these calculations and you know without his. Uh, I mean, maybe without his permission or maybe he was not even expecting that. Yeah, I don't think it was a permission issue. Uh, I think the issue was that maybe that person would have spent more time on that calculation. Okay. You know, so, so let's say there are 45 minutes for an interview, right? So first five minutes are for general introduction, making candidates feel comfortable. Last five minutes are for any questions. So you have only 35 minutes in an interview, right? Out of those 35 minutes, first five minutes, you will spend on understanding the question, finding out some functional requirements. Now, if you spend next 10 or 15 minutes in doing these calculations, making a lot of mistakes, then of course, interviewer does not have good data points about you because now you are spending only 10, 15 minutes on the important aspects of system design. Okay, so can we uh, can we also assume that system design and scalable system design are both uh, uh, one and same, or they are used interchangeably? Okay, so uh, uh, they, uh, there are some uh, interview loops where the um, where the low level uh, system design word is used. So it is uh, prevalent in Microsoft, especially. So low level system design is that where you assume that there is no database, there is no caching system. You are proposing a system that how you will do it on your own uh, using your coding skills. Got it. Sure. So, Thank you. So, yeah, so make sure, uh, like, uh, that's a good question. Uh, like, uh, make sure that you talk uh, this thing about uh, this with your recruiter first in a very advanced. 
so like um, in very advanced you talk to them you clear it out maybe ask for some helpful material as well many companies they give helpful materials from which you can get good direction also okay. and in interview yeah. you mean with the recruiter itself not not even the interviewer yeah yeah with the, the, if you ask a recruiter that means you are asking in one or two weeks advance right then you have time for focused preparation yeah if you go in interview and ask and then ask those things then you are too late right and i mean to say you know uh, maybe the inter, uh, the recruiter may not have uh, that much detail information after no was one they should have they should have if they don't have then they are not doing a good job okay <laughs> and sure. and and uh, they can always they can go to hiring manager they can go to the person responsible for the recruitments and they can get those details with you okay sure thank you yeah and and interviews also you know during the uh, interview also uh, talk to interviewer interviewer about your assumptions your questions talk to them frankly treat system design interview as a peer discussion then if you do that then lot of pressure goes off from your shoulders and you can have much more friendly discussion exactly i'm sure you all would have taken interviews right so you any day you would choose a person who comes across as a team player who comes across as a pleasing personality right? yeah so be that person don't take too much pressure All right. Thanks for the suggestion, uh, Gustavo. Do you have a question? Still? Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I see some good feedback. So honestly, it was my first class, so I was a bit nervous. But thank you for uh, being great students here. <laughs> thank you so much, and I'll be sharing the slides. uh please uh, take some time to share the feedback it would be really helpful for me personally also and whatever suggestions you have pass it to ops team also i i'll take a look into it personally thank you everyone and yeah uh, wish you all the best to land your dream job bye take care want to become a software engineer at google you can like thousands of our students You just need to learn from those who've already cleared Fang interviews. At Interview Kickstart, our interview prep courses are developed and taught live by 150 plus instructors from tier 1 companies like Google and Facebook. Our courses are tailored to help you crack software engineering domain interviews, including back-end, full stack, machine learning, embedded systems, data science, and more. To learn more, book your free webinar slot today 